Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Taco Talk. My name is Stephen Taco, author of the book Motivated to Act. And today I've got a, a Cleveland celebrity, Bob Golick here. Bob, thanks so much for being on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, appreciate it. I lived it. out in LA too. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm you? kind of uh, bi-coastal, <laughs> north coast, west coast. Yeah, well, you're like a big celebrity here in town. So like, yeah, you know, well, you were you, you were in the uh, LA Raiders. I was with the LA Raiders. I played here for seven years with the Browns, and then I went out and finished up my career where, with uh, the Raiders for four years, which was, yeah. uh, and then went into acting. Yeah, I became a thespian. <laughs> Saved by the Bell. I know I go out and I talk to the to the younger generation, and everybody's like, "Oh, that's the guy from Saved by the Bell." I'm yeah. like, you have so much experience of uh, talking to people and dealing with all types of scenarios, and what this show is all about is helping people who are uh, suffering from being bullied, right. but also people who are bullies. You know, we've got people watching the show that don't even realize that they're actually out there being the bully. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, you know, bullying is such a terrible thing to do, and yeah, let's raise money for it, not realizing that, that, that they're, they're, one of the, they're part of the problem. They're part of the problem, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I, I want to get your perspective, you know, from, from what you see on the field, and uh, you know how people, how sports uh, sports players, you know, they can be so aggressive on the field, mm -hmm. and yet be gentle and respective when, when well, they're at home. You know, it. And I'll, I'm, I'll start by saying that I remember when I played for the Browns, I came to to practice one day, and a bunch of the the reporters came out of their little. We kept them in a trailer over on the side because we didn't want them to be too close to us. But uh, I guess we bullied them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, you, you don't know the guys. They were just, uh, they, they were a pain to have around. Anyway, they came out, and, uh, and the one guy goes, hey, congratulations. And I said, what? He goes, he goes you have been uh, picked by the New York Times or one of the New York papers to uh, be listed as one of the most schizophrenic players in the National Football League. Wow. And I went, what an honor. oh, what an, that's what I said, what an honor. I go, what? He goes, well, he goes, basically what they're saying is they they were going through the list and they had some psychologists look and they said they wanted to find guys who were one way on the field and another way off the field. Basically, you know, two different personalities. It wasn't really schizophrenia. It wasn't split personality. It was just that you knew that when you were on the field, you did your job. But when you went off the field, you were Bob Golick. You weren't number 79 on the field. You were just Bob off the field. You know how sometimes you go to a movie Right. And it's like a car driving movie and you come out and you're just like, oh, man. Or you watch Top Gun and you're just like, oh, man, you just, you know, you feel like you can just do anything. Oh, sure. I remember watching Braveheart one time and all I wanted to do was go buy a sword and, and slash things. You know, it's kind of like the same thing. It's like when a lot of guys come off the f football field, I mean, their adrenaline is rushing. They just dominated somebody else. And unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but that's the nature of the beast. My dad always told me, when you go out on the football field, you have to you have to believe that the guy that's lined up across from you is not as good as you, that you are better than him. Mm -hmm. And so from that standpoint, you always, there's a very big ego aspect to it, which isn't, you know, the t traditional ego, it, it's kind of ego, I've got to believe that I'm better than him. And so in, in doing so, a lot of times you can become very, very high on what you can do. Very, uh, very much convinced that you, you're, you're the man. Right. And I had a lot. I had a lot of guys that after the games were over, we, you know, we'd go out afterwards and. Like you're invincible. You know. Yeah. You've got the huge yeah. ego. You're the the world centers around Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And we'd go out after the game sometimes. And some of the guys would they would bump into people. And they'd give them dirty looks, and you know I'd be the one kind of getting out of people's way. You know, just because hey, sorry, you know, oh sorry, go ahead. Right. And. I don't. I don't know wherein lies the difference. I think that you have to. I, I. I. like the idea of being able to tone it back, and just to say, you know, I'm Bob or I'm Mike or I'm Tom, and I'm not on the football field anymore. But unfortunately, at all levels, at all levels, and I think probably as much, probably as much in the teenagers as in high school, mm -hmm. because everybody at that point is trying to. To, to find their their the pecking order, 
They're trying to find the alpha dog. They're trying to find all that. I think that a lot of times you come off and you start believing the hype. And I think that's one of the big problems. People start believing the hype and they think that off the field they're the same as what they are on the field. Unfortunately, before that, it becomes all about, you know, all about living up to what people see you as. Right. Um, it would be better from the standpoint of bullying, certainly, mm -hmm. to, to have these kids act that way in school. Is a is a bad thing. I mean, they should be. You know, they should be more. Hey, you know, what can I do to help? You know, hey, I've got. You are a person of influence. Obviously, if you are one of these players, you're a person of influence within the school. You should do, utilize that for something besides. Hey, you know, I'm going to get the prettiest girl. I'm going to tell the nerds to you know what to do. Uh, because when it comes down to it, the real world comes up pretty quickly on you, and yeah. and at that point, nobody cares. Well, what do, you, what do you think about that coach that uh, like suspended all the the players of the football mm -hmm. team? Was that football team? I believe it was that. Yeah. Because they were uh, harassing, you know, some yeah. other people. Yeah. I think it's I think it's great. I because I, I don't think there's I, I think one of the problems that we have these days is that we don't have as much input from parents as we as we should. Uh, I think that there was a day there was a day when. Yeah, maybe not your day, but in my day, you get in trouble at school, and uh, you would go, "Oh God, you know, I can't. W I I don't want to go home because whatever happened in school is going to be ten times worse when I right. get home to my parents." Oh, yeah. These I days, I was afraid of my dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would get swats at school. It, it, I got swatted at school, and then I was going to get it worse when I got and, home. And you knew that that was going to be worse at home. But a lot of times these days, in in you know certain areas, I mean, you hear this all the time. Instead of the parents going, "Okay, I'll take care of it." You know, what the parents do now is they go in and say, well, not my Johnny. My Johnny wouldn't do that. And, the, the, right. and because of that, it kind of reinforces that, that invincibility, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, for these yeah. kids. And it doesn't, it doesn't, so you're not, getting, you're not getting any help from the teachers because they're kind of just, hey, he's a big man on campus. You're not getting any help from your friends because they like to, they want to hang around you. And you're not getting any support from your parents where you should be getting it first and foremost. And that's the sad thing too, because not only the parents a lot of times not be there. I mean, go to a PTA meet, meeting or go to a, uh, you know, one of these things where the, where the school is looking at, you know, is, is going to give you an evaluation of your kid. A lot of parents don't even show up. You know, a lot of kids don't show. A lot of parents don't show up. They don't show up for that. They don't show up for, for games. Uh, you know, a lot of parents are, and I understandably with the economy and stuff. A lot of them, a lot of times, both parents have to work, mm -hmm. things like that. Right, but I right. think, but I think that does contribute to the fact that we're leaving a lot of these kids on their own, and when they're left to their own devices, being built up by their, you know, by their peers. Uh, it, you know, it, it can it can get dangerous and get into that bullying situation. Um, my dad one time, I, I got some. I was a teenager, and I got some. Uh, somebody came up to him at a dinner, and said, "You know what?" He goes, "I know, I know your son Bobby is. Uh, you know, he's, he's all state, and he's all this and all that." He goes, "But he goes, you know, he is such a nice kid." And my dad came up to him one time, and he said, uh, "He goes, you know, he goes, you have no idea. He goes, that is the biggest compliment. He goes, I don't care about." football and awards and things like that he goes that's he goes that's the thing that makes me the most proud of you I watched my son the other day and he again he's all into the sports and things like that too we were in a store and I, I called him to the back and he kind of was jogging back and and he passed a woman who was standing looking at a, at a, at a counter and as he stepped in front of her, and she was standing back, as he stepped in front of her, he slowed down and he said excuse me I love that and he went by yeah. and I sat there and I'm watching that and I'm going yeah, uh, so did something right. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Le let the coaches do the coaching, and when it comes down to your kid, you, they've got a long life ahead of them. I mean, they've got a, a very long life ahead of them. Make them just let them be good people. Yeah, and and appreciate other people and be respectful. Of a other lot of people. people don't aren't aware that there's people around them. Yeah. I mean, they they're just so go focused they, on what they're doing. Absolutely, that you know, screw Every, everybody around me because I just yeah. I need this. Everything you do should be you should be able in your mind go okay, this is me, but but how's that going to affect so and so and so and so? Uh, and you know, if you try to be a good person, you can be a good person. I think that there are parents out there 
who see their kids and who, who are so hyped up about them being the superstar on the high school team. You're going to be the superstar on the, on the, the college team and you're going to be the best. And, you know, nobody's going to be able to touch you. And, and, and you see, I mean, it's, it's see, you see it all over the place. And you, I guess a lot of parents want to see their, their kids end up like yes. the, 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 uh, the Tom Brady's and, and the guys like that. But it's uh, unfortunately in doing so, they don't stress their humanity as much as they do their, you know, their ability. Oh, yeah. They, they turn a blind eye. Even yeah. if they know they're not dumb. They know what's going on. Sure. And and the parents are turning a blind eye to, to, to what the kids are doing mm-hmm. because they feel like that maybe is giving their kid an edge, you know, to be the big bully, yeah. you know, and push things around so that eventually they'll be famous. And I think a lot of the I think a lot of the guys that you see that have problems now, um, maybe probably started back in back in the day. I mean, face it, I mean, a lot of the guys that are superstars in the National Football League have been superstars in high school, like college, and they've always been the big man on campus. Everybody has always kowtowed to what they've done. Uh, and if you allowed that as an individual to, to dominate your persona, mm-hmm. uh, you've got problems. If your parents aren't there, and your parents, regardless of what anybody says, uh, regardless of working two jobs, regardless of anything, parents are still responsible for their kids. And if, they're, if the parents can't get the kids to realize that, that football is football, baseball is baseball, and life is what you're going to live forever. Right. And you've got yeah. to be part of society, not somebody outside of it, you know, hoping to, to benefit off of everybody. Um, I was raised by my parents, never touch a woman in anger. You know, you don't grab, you don't hit, you don't slap, you don't do any of that stuff. Now, the problem is, and one of the things that Whoopi said was, it to be in their argument in the in the the elevator, uh, Ray Rice's wife went up and slapped him first, and Ray retaliated most violently. Right, right. Um, Whoopi is is right in the sense that not everybody was raised like me, not everybody was raised like you. I had a I had a buddy that uh, back that I played with in high school. Him and his dad used to get knocked down, drag out fist fights. Oh, you know they'd argue instead of arguing or going to my room, they just fight. And then somewhere later they'd have a beer and they'd get up and they you know they'd be fine. Right. Not everybody is raised to 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 say you don't touch women. Some some people are raised and they say hey don't let anybody push you around. And so when you are when you're Ray Rice's wife. Obviously, I mean, she must have thought he was raised the right way, and that's one of the things that's important. I mean, they have to you know, the kid. You have to be raised that way. You have to be raised to understand that violence isn't going to be the thing that's going to be that's going to make you uh, to to make you stand out, to make you be a better person. Uh, a lot there's a, just a lot of people out there who feel we've been pushed around, we've been treated badly, and we're not going to let anybody do it. And unfortunately. Uh, you know, it can happen. Yeah. Well, well, Bob, thanks again so much for, for coming on. Share oh, a little pleasure. bit with, uh, with all of us uh, where you're at with your career right now and mm-hmm. what, what's heading on in the future for you. I am, uh, well, I'm thinking about a comeback in football. But, uh, <laughs> it's been a long time and I don't remember exactly what position I played. But, um, no, actually, you know, I do, I do right radio. Field. Right, right, right field. That's right. <laughs> I hated right field. People always bullied me for being a right fielder. Oh, Golic stuck in right field again. <laughs> That's right. He did it. He was the left fielder. He was the center fielder. Um, you know, uh, I do. I do radio. I, I do uh, sports uh, uh, television with the Brown Cleveland Browns here in Cleveland, and we've got a, a new site, uh, a website uh, called Shop Go- Shop. BobGolick.com. Figure the only thing I mispronounced the entire time is my name. <laughs> ShopBobGolick.com. And we've got a variety of things um, from barbecue, uh, spices, and, and all kinds of things uh, that, uh, that you do with grilling and cooking. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a growing list, and that's going to be coming out here in a little bit. We've, we've connected up with a, with a lot of uh, people. In fact, we've even connected up with a, a gentleman who was a cook at the White House. Uh, with a, a chef Samuel Morgante, and for some reason I, I nobody's calling me a chef yet, but I guess he deserves it. If you cook for the president, you're a chef. 
if you cook for your kids, you're dad. So I'm dad Bob Golick. So, Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but we've developed a thing called the uh, Potato Master, and uh, well, I won't explain it here now, but you'll see it very soon at, at shopbobgolick.com. So here we are, just two Ohio boys trying to make a difference in the world. And Bob, I appreciate you know you being so candid and, and honest uh, with your background and uh, helping all the dads, particularly out there. Yeah. You know, we're trying to make a difference. That's what Taco Talk is all about. You know, supporting yeah. each other and making sure that you know you can be as tough as nails on the field, mm -hmm. but you gotta respect other people. You know, open up the doors for ladies. Just be a be a real man. Be a yeah. gentleman. Be a great father. Be a great son. Be a great brother. I'm glad you took your hand off me because I was about ready to pop you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I'm from LA, you know. I'm from Ohio, but I live in LA, so you know we're we're much more huggy. Yeah, that's right. So, anyways, thanks again for tuning in to Takeo Talk, and we'll see you real soon.